you don't say. want... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, that's all right. I, I, I had nothing to say. I realized that I don't know, but I didn't either. Uh -huh. so I, I realized that I didn't know exactly what your marital status is at the moment, even though I know you. Are you officially single now or semi-officially single? I'm or? single. Yeah. Uh, in the sense of not being married, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. I can do anything I like to anyone I like. <laughs> Oh. With their consent. Ah, well, it's a long show, and uh, <laughs> I'm, yes, I was I'm single. I was thinking sometime you ought to really write a serious book on uh, women and, and marriage because you've been through how many two? I was married two times. Two full times. Uh, once and then once again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you ever uh, do, do you think when you've been married twice that you caught on to the first marriage? What would make a second marriage work? You know what I mean. And then is it a shock when you find that? the thing you thought you learned from the first marriage doesn't work in the second marriage. Right, because you apply everything that you learned in the first marriage to the second girl. And that's a problem, because the second girl is nothing like the first girl if you're yeah. lucky. And um, that's exactly what I did. I, yeah. I made a certain amount of mistakes in my first mm -hmm. marriage, like showing up, you know. Um, <laughs> and because of it, um, I, I tried to learn from those mistakes and gain a certain wisdom. And in my second marriage, I applied these little nuances and tricks and little, little moves and things that I was able to, to accumulate over the years. And, and um, that marriage lasted shorter than my first marriage. So there's just no way to know. Now, would you take a third one, a, a third uh, dive? Uh, From who? Third chance? No, would you, take a, would you take a chance on a third marriage? Uh, 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 I you... would marry again, I think, uh, mm -hmm. if the opportunity presented itself in a way that enabled me to feel that there was a chance of it succeeding. Yeah. But is there this a is not a proposal, is it? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a long show, however. <laughs> the, uh, the, is there a type that you look for? Do you have a certain set of characteristics that you see? Ah, there goes Miss Wright. Uh, yeah, but, you know, you'll hate me if I say it. Um, yeah. I, I like pretty girls. You know, I'm old-fashioned that way. I, I like yeah. girls that are pretty and earthy-looking. You know, you know, almost, almost broad. I'd rather she was overweight than underweight and long hair mm -hmm. and straggly earth mother sexual kind of animal disgusting <laughs> types, you know? And, yes. and uh, th that's right, you, you know, you really see them there with the blouse and, and you know, dirty and everything. And, and, and I enjoy that and because then, the thought mm -hmm. of what you could do with them later is wonderful. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And uh, I like them to be intelligent and have a good sense of humor, to anticipate my needs and be um, aggressive without being masculine. I like a girl who will perform any act without any problem and a girl that doesn't like to cook and doesn't like to do home things and a girl, uh, her religious convictions don't matter whatsoever and um, just about uh, anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would, you ever, would you ever go on a blind date? Uh, I would not go on a blind date because uh, I used to go on blind dates yeah. and they were not successful for me for the most part. The trouble with a blind date is the anticipation of the girl that you're going to get on the date never comes out to be what you actually wind up with. I so you, you have wonderful thoughts of you'll open the door and this girl will be there and she'll be sensational. Then you meet her, you know, and she's like playing with a rubber tire hanging from a chain in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, and it's, it's depressing, and, and everybody goes through the same thing, because you can't, uh, there's no way to beat that blind date thing, because yeah. what you build up, when, when you hear you have a blind date, and they say the girl's name is like Gloria or something, oh, yes. I, I said Gloria at random, because I don't know any Glorias, yeah. and uh, you think you're going to get a real package of wonderfulness, they sound great over the phone and everything, mm -hmm. and there's no way the girl can live up to it. Also, there's no way you can live up to her expectation. I have a dread of knocking on the door on a blind date, and the girl opening the door and looking at me, and her face falling, you know, and, you know, that look where she says, or when I was younger, where they used to look at me, and they'd say, oh, come in, you know, forcing a smile on their face, and I would sit down, and they would run back in their bedroom and take their heels off and put on flats. Oh, time, yes, you know? I used to get that. Sure, because oh, they used yeah. to tower over me on those. Um... Yeah. Oh, I hated that. Wait a minute, we, let's go into this deeper. We will return after this brief message of interest. Talking with Woody Allen, and we were talking about the problems of uh, that thing really hits home with me. The girl going in and putting on flatter shoes, that that used to happen all the time. Yeah, we're, we're approximately the same size, although I I would think uh, I'm a little probably a little taller than you are. Did you get that much as a kid? Did they did they ever call you shorty? Um, 
Mm -hmm. They didn't call me shorty, but I was always kind of like first or second on line, you know, which is really a humiliating experience when you're a kid because you want to be, I don't know why you want to be taller. There's no advantage in being taller, but when they tell you that tall is good, and so it's, you know, it's better to be tall. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but it used to plague me. Are, are you in any kind of legal hassle now? The last time you were here, you had a couple of lawsuits going, and I wondered if they've yes, resolved. I, my, um, uh, I don't know if I can say this. I'm, my my ex-wife is suing me because I made a um, an amusing remark about her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she um, she lives on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, mm -hmm. and she was coming home late at night, and she was violated. That's how they put it in the New York paper. She was violated. And they asked me if I would comment on it. And I said, knowing my ex-wife, it probably was not a moving violation. <laughs> so she's suing me, you know. Well, I, I, I can't imagine why. I mean, the woman must have no sense of humor. But, yeah, well, now I, she'll be suing me, so I wouldn't want to say that. But, but you know, was, I, I just said it in a moment of gay abandon, yeah. you know? <laughs> She sued me for a million dollars in a moment of enormous abandon. <laughs> if, you, if you were to meet on the street suddenly, would you be cordial, though, probably? Uh... Yes. I think if I ran into her on the street, we would stop and chat and exchange blunt instruments. <laughs> I, uh, the, I, don't, I don't like to ask all guests the same questions, but I've... There's one that I, I, I sort of wish I'd been asking people all along, and that is, can they remember when they first became aware of uh, the difference between the sexes, the birds and the bees, the, the phenomenon of... There's uh, a difference? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. I, I, mean, this, this I became aware real early. I was precocious. Can you remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember becoming aware that there was another sex that was softer than mine uh, mm -hmm. when I was in the crib. You know, when I was a tiny really? baby in the crib. Yeah, I remember. I remember those are girls, and I like them, and I want to be around them and touch them. And 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 boys are good, but they're not as good. They're better for delivering <laughs> messages and stuff. You know, and and <laughs> girls are good to eat with and stroke. And and um, I knew that right away. You know, in the crib. I've devoted my life to it. Were you not alone in the crib? Uh, uh, not if I could swing it. <laughs> I, I have I have very very early memories of of, a, of a feelings of erotic attraction very early uh, not the crib but maybe year or year one or two and uh, I always felt that that was probably bad you know and then I, I really know you feel it. guilty about it right yeah you know because yeah. you, you had those those erotic thoughts when of course I was in the crib till quite a late age. <laughs> <laughs> Where you met your second wife, isn't it? <laughs> it's really funny because because yeah. most people don't. Most people there, there is a, a, a stage of latent sexuality where, but but I don't think I ever had a stage yeah. of of latent sexuality. I think I was right in there swinging, you know, all the time, trying hard. And and uh, I remember asking my mother, uh, you know, how do you get babies? And at the time, she thought that I said rabies, you know. <laughs> and she said from a dog bite, you know. And, this is the sum total of my sexual education. Oh, yeah. My that... aunt had uh, twins about two months later, and I thought she was attacked by a Great Dane, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that is... I, you know, when I was reading about Freud later when I was in college, because I always worried about those feelings, and uh, it turned out that that's what shocked Vienna in the, in the late 19th century, was that uh, he dared to say that children had sexual thoughts. They couldn't believe this. This was outrageous. I, I, guess, know. Uh, I, I guess it's accepted today. Maybe not. I Maybe don't not. know. You know, people, I, I'm always shocked by the amount of, of prudery uh, over mm -hmm. sex. I was in, uh, coincidentally, you mentioned Vienna uh, uh, during the summer because Bananas yeah. opened there recently. Uh, and um, I visited Freud's house which is really interesting, you know, and they got all the, uh, mm -hmm. they have his wait, the furniture of his waiting room they have intact. And um, they don't have the furniture of his uh, treatment room. And they, you know, they have pictures of where the couch was and where, where the yeah. desk was and everything. And there's a, there was a lot of analysts in town in mm -hmm. Vienna. Oh, yeah, there was a really, conference. 
Right, yeah. and and they're all there, and they, they they read papers in the daytime and visit Freud's house, and and in the evening they get drunk and hang out in the city, you know. And you can always tell yeah. Freudian analysts when they get drunk, you know, because they they're always singing, "I want a gal just like the gal that married dear old dad," you know? <laughs> <laughs> which distinguishes them from any other school of treatment. I never realized what a what a neurotic song that was. Oh, they were all there, you know, really just en masse. Yeah. I I. I'm now in my 13th year with a Freudian analyst. Oh, can we talk about that when we come back? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Obviously need a 14th year then. Well, uh, we, maybe we will. Let's okay, leave we'll it that way. We'll leave it open. We have a message we'll leave it.